Hello and welcome to The Widow's Oil. Today I want to discuss a story in Judges that really reminds me of the days that we now live in and the struggles we are going through in the Western Church. It is recorded in Judges 12 and it is about um, Jephthah, one of the judges, and his battle with Ephraim. So we will read that and then I will discuss what I see in that. It says there in Judges uh, from 12, from verse 1 uh, to verse 7. Then the men of Ephraim gathered together, crossed over towards Zaphon and said to Jephthah, Why? Did you cross over to fight against the people of Ammon and did not call us to go with you? We will burn your house down on you with fire. And Jephthah said to them, My people and I were in a great struggle with the people of Ammon, and when I called you, you did not deliver me out of their hands. So when I saw that you would not deliver me, I took my life in my hands and crossed over against the people of Ammon, and the Lord delivered them into my hand. Why then have you come up to me this day to fight against me? Now Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought against Ephraim, and the men of Gilead defeated Ephraim, because they said, you Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim among the Ephraimites and among the Manassites. The Gileadites seized the lords of the Jordan before the Ephraimites arrived. And when any Ephraimite who escaped said, let me cross over, the men of Gilead would say to them, are you an Ephraimite? If he said, no. Then they would say to him, say Shibulay, and he would say Sibulay, for he could not pronounce it right. Then they would take him and kill him at the fords of the Jordan. There fell at that time 42,000 Ephraimites. So what we find here is the men of Gilead in conflict with um the uh, tribe of Ephraim. Now, I don't want to look at all the details because this is just about certain principles, but I do want to show you here yeah, in the Esau, in Numbers 26 verse 29, it says, of the sons of Manasseh, of, um, of Makir, the family of the Makarites, and Makir begat Gilead, uh, of Gilead came the family of the Gileadites. So what I'd like you to see is these people of Gilead come from Manasseh. And my point with that is Ephraim and Manasseh were brothers. So these were two tribes, but the fathers of the tribes were brothers. And Gilead comes from Manasseh. So Jephthah, being from Gilead, is actually fighting against his brother. You see, we've got brothers both from the house of Joseph. Now, Joseph, in a sense, in our day, is like Christianity. So you've got these two different groups in Christianity that are fighting. And you can see, yeah, Ephraim was actually angry at Jephthah and said, we will burn your house down with fire. Now, in my previous video regarding bringing fire down from heaven, I explained that that is a characteristic that we see um, that we as believers, when we are not spiritually mature, we think that we must burn each other's house down with fire when we do not agree in how we see matters religiously because remember James and John wanted to um, destroy the Samaritan village that didn't want to receive Jesus uh, with fire from heaven like Elijah so likewise we see here Ephraim 
who are battling against um, his brother, his brothers in Gilead, uh, who are of Manasseh, uh, threatening to destroy them. And then you'll see those of Gilead actually do the same type of thing. So they have this war here, and then they fight their brothers, the Gileadites fight the Ephraimites, and it says there, when any Ephraimite escapes, they they tell him, say a certain word in a certain way, and he does, if he does cannot pronounce it right, they kill him. So the parallel I see in Christianity is I also see two groups in Christianity, brothers. I see the Christianity that we've known till now, and then I see this Hebrew roots group. And the Hebrew roots group is like the Shefta and the Gileadites. They are trying to fight the people of Ammon. Um, Ammon is the incestuous son of Lot with his second daughter. So people that are in Hebrew roots and that they see the, the lukewarmness in the church and the fact that the people are not being true to Christ and then they are trying to fight that but they're fighting it in in the wrong way they're actually ending up fighting against their own brother Ephraim Ephraim on the other hand is not helping them in this battle they are just going along with the sta status quo so so that represents um Christians who who hold on to the form that we were handed down, but are not standing against this, um, this wrongness that we see in the church. So both groups are not battling correctly. But my point is to show you here how it's exactly the same with the one group, the Hebrew root Torah people, actually killing their brothers for just a word. They they say to them, say Shibboleth, and if they can't say it because they pronounce different, then they kill them. And that is exactly what I see, is people actually even going so far as to say, if you call Jesus Jesus, then and not Yeshua, then you obviously or you are worshiping an idol people that is not true jesus's name is in the greek tongue show you how foolish it is to fight about the way to say jesus's name just look here in um revelation um nine where we we read of apollyon and it says there, I'm not going to read it all, you can go and read yourself if you want to, but it says there, and they had a king over them, the angel of the bottom, bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. If we say Jesus, then people who are Hebrew roots or who are um in the sacred name movement, they say, no, no, but you must call him Yeshua, that's the same as, because <laughs> that's exactly what it says here. He has a Greek name. The New Testament makes provision for the Greek and the Hebrew. So can you see there how foolish it is if even in the, in the um, book of Revelation, there is the Hebrew way of saying a, a badin, of saying the name of this king of the bottomless pit, but in Greek, he, his name is said in a different way. So this insistence to say uh, certain words really reminds me of brothers slaying each other for a word. So yeah, in Isaiah 29 verse 21, it speaks of those who make a man an offender by a word and lay a snare for him. And turn aside the just by empty words. And that to me perfectly sums up what we see at the moment. 
brothers Ephraim and Manasseh fighting each other, instead of fighting our con common enemy, which is this false prophet that's being tolerated in our midst to teach lies, and then slaughtering each other for a word, fighting about how to pronounce God's name and Jesus' name. There are groups that are different because of how they say Jesus. They say, some say Yeshua, some say Yehusha, some say Joshua, some say Jehushua, and so it goes on. And then we have the name of yod hei vav hei, which is also so many different expressions, and everybody is fighting how they say it, how they um, say they must pronounce it. Since the beginning of this year, the Lord has put this word in my heart, and that is why I bought this. It says, gather, gather. Because all this fighting that we do amongst each other, using the word of the Lord, the sword of the Lord, to slay each other down, is scattering. We are scattering ourselves. We are not gathering. And Jesus said, those who are with me are gathering. People, we need to start gathering, but not in the ecumenical movement, which is gathering um, in a in an iniquitous way, not that's the wrong way. But we need to start to think about gathering. The Lord is coming to gather us again. It's the time of scattering is almost done and we are going to be gathered because that is why he's coming for his people is to gather us again. So we need to make a switch. We need to use our sword of the spirit as a plowshare to, in order to sow seeds and to preach the gospel, not to be cutting each other up for just a word, for we are brothers.